Hello, Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours here. I'm on the island of Bronholm and I'm making 360 video walking tours for people who either can't get to the island of Bronholm or can't get around the island. And today uh, we're actually in the town of Svanica and uh, we're going to take a walk around the town and uh, also have a look inside the church. So I really hope you enjoy the tour. This is uh, Svanica Harbour and uh, we're facing north and I'm just going to turn um, slowly around and um, walk up around the harbour and uh, up the street directly in front of us on the other side of the harbour towards the church. It's a, um, it's a beautiful day uh, today, a little bit windy and uh, there's a lot of sunshine so it's going to make it a little bit difficult in terms of doing the uh, walking tour around and back down into the harbour because uh, the sun will be directly in front of us as I'm walking down the street. And it's a bit of a challenge because I want to film at this time of day because it's relatively quiet and there's not a lot of people around. Um, but uh, it's actually better to film when it's not so sunny. However, some days it just doesn't work out and I've been wanting to film this uh, town for a while and uh, just never seem to have gotten the right day to do it. So I'm just going to bite the bullet and make the film and um, we'll see how it goes. So um, Svanica was actually made into its own municipality quite um, late on. It wasn't um, until the 1800s, which is really late because the town where I live, Nexu, actually became a market town in, and a municipality in its own right in the 1300s. And the reason why Svanica hasn't been its own municipality is because um, it has always belonged to the parish of Ibska. And uh, Ibska is quite a bit more inland than Svanica. And most of the old towns, which have really become much smaller outposts of the harbour towns on the island, were the major towns in the medieval ages. And that was because there was a lot of threat from marauders on the coast, mostly from the Wends, who were a sort of a group of, a motley group of people, I guess, a, not really a particular nationality, but a group of people who lived on the northern coasts of Poland and Germany. And uh, the coast was under constant threat of attack, so it was much safer to live inland. So the harbours of uh, Bonhomme didn't actually start to become towns uh, until after the threat from these marauders was gone. Now the thing I love about Spanica is it has all these lovely little uh, squares and uh, you can see that it's still possible to drive through these squares. So the um, <coughs> residents have made these quite lovely little warning signs that there are actually children playing in the squares and to slow down because, come on, because cars actually have a habit of driving rather quickly through the small streets. So we're coming up to the church now and as I said before this has actually been a satellite church of the major church which is up in Ibska and I must do a walk uh, in Ibska because it's quite a beautiful surrounding. It's about seven kilometres inland from this church and as you can see we've actually come to the end of the town. It's not a very big town. And so the back street here just leads out to all the fields. But we'll uh, wander into uh, 
into the church and uh, have a look around. This is just the uh, back way into the church and normally I'd pop in there and have a look at the graveyard but I can hear the lawnmowers going so we'll come around the front and and just have a quick look at the graveyard before we go uh, into the church. Now the other thing about Svanica is that it's a wonderfully preserved town and most of the buildings as you can see in front of us are still the half timbered wattle and daub type and they're absolutely glorious and we'll see a few more of those houses when we walk back down into the town square after we've been inside the church. But as you can see, as with all of the graveyards on the Bon Holm, the, um, the lawns and the hedges are just absolutely perfectly kept. It's, a, it's really a sign of a peaceful society, I think, when you can see the graveyards being looked after so meticulously and, and uh, carefully in remembrance of the people who have uh, who have uh, contributed so much to the society before. I'm just going to turn around. I'm just hoping that the sun doesn't blind you as I turn around. You might need to wear some sunglasses while you're watching this video. But we also have a pretty good uh, approach to the church as we come around. Let's go in and have a look. So just in the porch here, we actually have some uh, very interesting information about the uh, church. And I'll come back and read a little bit about that once we've uh, been in and have a look. But one of the things I wanted to point out while we're in here is just the list of all of the ministers who have had responsibility for this, uh, for this parish. So it wasn't just this church, but it was also Ibska Church as well um, and, uh, and the little church in Lissel. So they actually had three churches within their parish. And uh, this list on the right, on the left, sorry, I'm so hopeless with my, with my directions. This list on the left is uh, actually um, dating right back to the Reformation. So that's back right back to, to the 1530s when Re Reformation um, when the Reformation movement came to um, came to Denmark, and then uh, the list goes on, and then it goes right up until 2017, which was when the last um, minister was uh, was um, brought in to um, to look after the parish. So we'll just go in and have a look at the. Uh, church it's um it's absolutely lovely and it is very uh minimalist and uh the colors of each of the churches on bonholm are actually usually chosen by a local artist and a local artist is engaged to do some of the artwork in the church and um, i also just wanted to point out the lace work around the altar um, which actually says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And um, you can see the, the beautifully uh, appliqued uh, sheep that are um, sitting there on the lace work. So we'll just uh, go back um, outside the church and, uh, or into the porch. And uh, I just wanted to um, read a little bit uh, about the church and, um, and the history of it. So as recently as 1569 in the rural book of the Lund Diocese, Svanica Church was referred to as Suanica Chapel. 
The church has always been and is to this day an annex for Ibs Church or Ibska Church. By the time Svanica was granted a municipal charter in 1550, the small fishing hamlet had already had its own church for nearly 200 years. The weather vane on the church's elegant spire is the town's crowned and gilded swan. And incidentally, the swan is um, the national animal of Denmark and uh, Svenica uh, actually is a derivative of swan. Svena is swan in Danish. So the church building itself dates back to the late Middle Ages and originally consisted only of a small nave built of split field stones. Later, a west tower and a porch to both north and south were added. Both porches were torn down in 1837 and the church entrance was fitted up in the bottom storey of the tower. The two porches still existed when the church was drawn for Thora's Bornholms for Sleosa in 1756. So there's some pictures there about that. Both porches were timber framed. The north scene in the drawing was used as a powder magazine in the 1700s. The tower, presumably erected in the 16th century, had a pitched roof like in the drawing. In 1789, it received its high shingled spire. According to Thora, the timber framing on the bell story was reminiscent of the timber framing on the island's other bell towers. And you can see a couple of my other films, actually, particularly of the round churches, where, um, where we look at the uh, bell towers around those round churches. It was only a small church building, about 16 metres long and 9 metres wide, which understandably, but also regrettably, had to be expanded in 1881, as it was too small to accommodate the churchgoers in the small village. As seen in the picture, the church had a flat perpendicular east gable end with two windows. To this day, the location of the demolished porch is still discernible in the south wall of the nave. The church had previously been even smaller, as it had been heightened in 1724. The photo is before the expansion in 1881. The plan of the small church building from Thora's Bonhomes for Sleosa in 1756 shows the interior design of the church at that time. The same source provides various facts about the church. The altar between the two windows in the east was a work of sculpture beautifully painted and gilded. An inscription on the altarpiece tells that it was made in the year 1600 by town recorder Mass Knapp for the glory of God, the decoration of the church and the memory of the donator, of course. According to an inscription from 1687, the pulpit was situated to the right of the altar, but in 1857 it was placed behind the altar, like in Ellinger and Warner churches. The church was filled up with pews and stairs led up to both a men's and a women's gallery, the latter from 1725. The baptismal font was situated in the bottom of the tower. Um, there's also a runic stone um, inside the north of the churchyard gate, so we actually go out and have a look at that, which was once a, br once a bridge stone over Gulensot stream in Ustamoy. So that's just a town there, a little bit east of here. And the modern translation of the runic inscription, Bo had the stone erected in memory of his good father Ukil. Christ have mercy on his soul. So the church's other sites of interest are the church bells. Both were recast in 1701 and the largest again in 1913. Three tablets mounted in the porch list the names of the person since the Reformation. Yes, we already talked about that. And a commemorative plaque in memory of the visit by Christian V to the town in 1687. That would be the um, plaque that's just behind us here if you turn your head around. Um, and a gravestone for Albert Wolfson, who was killed in battle against the Swedes near Nexu in 1645. So there we go. Let's go out and have a look at these rune stones because they are actually quite interesting. I'll just walk up and around here because there's actually a whole series of uh, gravestones and end at the one that's the most uh, interesting. Oops, that's a graveyard. I don't really want to walk across that. We'll stick to the paths. Here we go. Once again, just a little warning about the sun. It might be a bit bright in your eyes as we walk down here. 
and uh, just going to uh, walk past these uh, rather enormous gravestones, which is what was the traditional way of commemorating someone back in the day. And then we'll end at the rune stones. We're sort of going back in time. That one says 1797. So, I mean, we're really talking hundreds of years. And this is the rune stone that was uh, that was uh, engraved. How on earth they could make out the uh, what that says? Not much sort of left of the of the runes. But that was uh, for Uku, God rest his soul. So we'll head uh, up and around the back of the uh, town now because there's some really lovely little streets um, where uh, I just wanted to have a little look at some of the small walled gardens um, and also the view from the top of the back of the town if the sun is not uh, too blinding. Let's, uh, let's just uh, see how that goes. I'd actually really um, appreciate some feedback on, uh, on any of these films, just in terms of the clarity of the um, filming and, uh, and the weather. Um, it's obviously best to film in overcast weather, but uh, sometimes it's just not possible to, to get out there and do that. And it's just a matter of getting to the point where so long for, for the right weather and it just doesn't come. Okay. So over here in this garden we have a lovely little uh, greenhouse. People can sit out and enjoy the sunshine. And then each of these houses has a wonderful view over the town towards the water. So we're just walking up the back here and we'll uh, come to a garden where the view opens uh, right out. And actually because the camera is on top of my head the view uh, should actually be even better. The other lovely thing about these towns is the hollyhocks in uh, all the towns are really uh, alive and quite special. So here we have an absolutely lovely hilltop garden which as luck would have it is shaded by the tree so we can actually look out and uh, enjoy the view and the birds and the view out across the uh, town and uh, just uh, in front of us a couple of buildings over is the town square and we're going to walk uh, down uh, down into the town square and then back down to the harbour we'll see how it goes with the with the sunshine Here's where we turn right and we might be a little bit bothered by the sun but let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I particularly uh, love this uh, small little street which goes on down, uh, down into the town on these, uh, along these steps. Again, a lovely little sitting area up there with the uh, with the view of the sea. 
Now we're coming down the back of the uh, town here to a small uh, or a large pump, I guess you'd call it back in the day. It's not working. We've tried it a few times when we walked past here. And uh, over to our left is actually the back of the Svanica Brewery. And uh, it's not the actual brewery itself, it's the pub that's associated with the brewery. But uh, the thing of it is that uh, it's been a hugely successful enterprise and they're now exporting beers around the globe. And uh, it's just an example of what microbreweries can, can achieve in terms of success um, crafting organic and uh, very nice beers. So uh, this is the main uh, town square. It's a bit quiet because it's early in the morning and um, in the height of summer it's actually extremely um, busy and there's a Wednesday market so the square fills up with the, the market on Wednesdays. There's a um, boiled sweets factory over here and um, there's also a chocolate shop and uh, a shop uh, that sells Viking memorabilia as well as an ice cream shop behind us and all of these places become very busy during the summer. I just wanted to uh, come over here to uh, this little stall just uh, walk in under so the sun's not bothering us and um, this little store has been here since 1836. Just go around the front and, and have a look at it. I did ask the proprietor if I could film inside, but she wasn't very happy about that. So that's absolutely fair enough. It's important to respect that. But this little store has uh, been here since 1836. And um, that's actually only seven years after the colony that I come from, Perth, or the Swan River Colony, it was called back in the day, was settled. So that's that's been almost as long as Australia's modern history. Now there's a garbage truck locking where I want to go down, but that might actually be a blessing because the sun is shining right down that alleyway. So we might just uh, find an alternative route and take uh, a different um, take a different route down back down to the harbour. So this is sort of the main commercial district uh, of the town. There's a lot of interesting shops and and things going on. That place is being renovated, that's new. So we're going to round the corner here and come into the full sunlight. So let's see how, how that goes. Now we're coming in behind one of the merchant's properties um, which is where all the goods that um, were being uh, exported and imported were actually kept. It's actually it's been turned into a hotel now but it was originally a merchant's quarters 
It's actually quite lovely. So we might just walk through because I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, about uh, the square that we're going to now. You can see we are back down on the harbour now, over to our left. Just a lovely place to go and have a cup of coffee and enjoy the view. So we come out on this side and then I've actually managed to uh, avoid the sun. This is the part of the street that I wanted to walk down before. There's our garage I just wanted to show this street because it's quite an important street. We have the glass blowing, which is a large industry on the uh, island, an important industry on the island here on the left. And here we actually have a bingo board painted on the ground. And um, it's actually a chicken pooing bingo. So what happens is the uh, gates we see in front of us goes around the um, around the square here, and uh, the chickens are put inside the square. And the first number that gets pooed on by the chicken is third prize. The second number is second prize, and the last number is first prize. And uh, you just go and buy your tickets from the glass blowing. Uh, shop in there and um, you can participate in the chicken pooing uh, bingo so that's a big event on a Saturday afternoon if you'd like me to come and film it I actually know the guy who owns the chickens so uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to come back on Saturday and and film this now the last thing I just wanted to talk about while I wrap up this video is why um, Svanica is so well preserved why is it so beautifully preserved with these half timbered houses. And the reason why is because when the railroad on Bornholm was being built, the Svanica councillors, who were also the merchants of the town, wanted to protect their interests, their sea interests, their sea trade interests. And they believed that the railway would actually destroy their business. So they did not want the railway to come through. And uh, the reason why they decided was also because they had to pay for their kilometres of track of the railway to come up from Nexu. And that was going to cost seven kilometres worth of railway and they didn't want to pay for it and they didn't want their trade to be disturbed, their sea trade. So that meant that the railway went directly from Nexu to the next large town up the way, which is called Gulliem and uh, bypassed Svanica completely. And of course, when um, the railway bypasses a town, the town misses out on the commercial benefits of that railway. So um, no one had enough money to pull down the old houses that were falling apart and um, build new ones. So they had to um, make do with the houses that they had and repair them. And that's why we have these two beautifully preserved merchant's houses in front of us. This hotel that was a merchant's house, you can see the half timber all the way along, and uh, also the other hotel over here on the left hand side, which was also a half timbered um, building you can see as it goes up the alleyway there. So that was a tour of uh, Svenica town sitting um, just on the northern tip of the eastern coast of the island of Bornholm in the Baltic Sea. I hope you enjoyed the tour. This is Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours signing off. Bye for now.